Welcome to Engine's Call for Entry launch for 2013. Uh, my name's Carol Morris and I'm the General Manager of Unlimited, which you're probably wanting to know who on earth we are. Um, you'll see our name through every page of the presentation. <clears throat> Un essentially, Unlimited is an industry body that's not for profit and we work across your sector. So our focus is on media, marketing and the advertising industry. And our primary focus is to support charities and organisations that address youth disadvantage in Australia. Um, I've had the privilege of being in this role for three months and it's absolutely mind-blowing to see what needs to be done in this space. Um, what we actually do here, um, there's sort of three core pillars to Unlimited. One of them is through fundraising activities. Each year at the moment we're generating funds of just over a million dollars that get distributed um, and we offer a very comp comprehensive mentoring program that supports the different charities as well. Um, another key factor of what we're trying to do is enable these charities to become sustainable. As you can imagine, there's so many charities in the marketplace trying to create funding um, continuously is a pretty rigorous process. So we have a lot of programs in place that try and create sort of a sustainable solution to them so that they don't have to keep rattling the tin every year. Um, we believe that unlimited, the possibilities for youth at disadvantage in Australia should be unlimited. So hence the logo and our brand name that it transcends across the whole need sector of the organisations and the youth themselves. Um, currently we have nine beneficiaries that we support um, and we're really thrilled that Youth Off The Streets is, is one of those organisations today. So our alignment is in this space is basically connecting one of our beneficiaries with a key group in the industry which is the engine community um, and supporting this category for the MFA awards. So um, wish you all well and I would just like to introduce Katie Rig smith who's the CEO from Mindshare, who will take you through the brief and then we have Andrea and Christine to answer some questions later. So good luck everybody and thank you. Now I'm on the MFA award committee which is why I'm here today representing the general award committee on uh, for the MFAs. We had the call to entry this morning, hence why we're then briefing you guys. So before we get into the actual brief, we wanted to just give you some tips on, on how to enter and, and the best way to enter. I'm conscious that we've got varied skills here. I've seen a lot of your faces at Can Young Lions and a lot of your faces in different um, away days for NGen. So just forgive us if you think you know everything already, but maybe it's worth hearing some more tips and tricks. It's never bad to hear it again. So winning is definitely about preparation. As we know, no one gets a gold the night, um, you know, waking up and then just running a race the next day. So the key thing here is preparation. But what I want to say to you is start now. I don't know how many of you feel like your diary controls you, but um, I certainly felt for a long time that my diary controlled me until I realised that what I wasn't doing was actually putting any time to build the thinking in my own diary. So I don't know how many of you have all of your meetings are put in your diary and the minute you needed to do something, you have a meeting and you turn up. But when you've actually got a task to do, do you actually put that task, break it down into chunks in your diary? Because it's certainly something I haven't seen many people do and it would be my number one piece of advice when answering any strategic response is get your diary out and start breaking out the time. You may only have 30 minutes in a day, put 30 minutes in to read something. Put 30 minutes in your diary to define the target audience, but spend time. Because what will happen without fail is you'll sit here today and go, oh, I've got until July. That's totally a lo loads of time to do this. And you'll get to two days before and your heads of departments will be saying to you, you signed up for this, where's your paper? And you'll be going, I don't know where the time went. So my biggest piece of advice is, Start now, and by starting now, I mean actually put some time in your diary to figure out how you're going to break down the task. Keep it simple. You'll hear this many times, but as we're reading these award papers, lots of big language, lots of uh, you know, use of industry terms doesn't impress. We just want you to keep it simple. The better your strategy, the more likely you are to have a concise and simple answer. And uh, while we're at it, check your spelling. And for me, I am a grammar Nazi. I hate to say it, I did join that Facebook group that says, I will judge you for grammar. I do judge you for grammar. But so make sure that you do spend some time. And if spelling and grammar is not your thing, fine. Make sure someone else is proofreading this for you. Consider the layout. Um, clearly, I didn't pull this slide together, but one of the boys did, and it's evidently a big issue when urinals are put back to back. So apologies for that. But um, yeah, consider your layout in your paper. 
How does the argument actually flow? How is it easy for us to read? Make sure that there are great headlines. Make sure that you know, you're being concise, but that you're building a narrative rather than just kind of putting heaps of information in. And we'll talk ad nauseum about this notion of storytelling, but that's the best way to get an idea into the world today. And unfortunately, we lose the art of storytelling for some reason once we get into the business world. So make sure you're building a narrative. Tell us a story. The opening line should be something compelling. Don't go through all the facts again. Tell us the story, build the narrative, and I guarantee we'll be more likely to read it with intent rather than hearing the same things lined out that we'll hear on every paper. Cull out the irrelevant. Now, as you go through this brief, and it is a really exciting project that you're getting to work on, um, you know, I'm tempted to just answer the brief myself, but cull out the irrelevant. You will find loads of extra facts. You'll go down lots of different paths. It doesn't matter, unfortunately, when you get to the actual paper. You have to just stick to the story that you're building. If the points, the data, the insight doesn't build upon itself, then unfortunately leave it out no matter how great it is. And if you're that conscientious, write two papers. Um, and think outside the square, an obvious one, but what we're looking for is innovation. Again, I've seen the work coming out of, of this group of people in the, on the floor at the moment and I'm floored with it. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. So we want to see some innovation. We want to see some big, exciting ideas that have linked to an insight. So don't be afraid to be game. And read. My advice is as you're flighting out your diary for the next week is make sure that you're putting in some reading time. Read MFA papers, read people's papers from your office, read award entries. You're not going to follow the exact thing but it'll help you see how papers are structured and you can always go to the MFA, Can Young Lines or Ad News sites and they'll have captured award papers for you. So make sure you're just reading stuff on how those stories are laid out. And then the last couple of points before we get into the actual brief, because I know that's why you are all here, but just in regards to structure, you've got to make sure, again, some of you I know were very, very au fait with this, but make sure that that idea that you've created that is central, one, it answers the task for communication, Two, it has a really strong consumer insight. And again, when you're talking to people internally and you're asking maybe your head of strategy or your direct line manager for support, make sure that they're helping build and, and crystallise the insight with you. So when you come up with it, get them to sense check it because often we get fact rather than insight. So what you really need is insight in that um, consumer piece. Then how you make sure that the idea is going to be better in terms of a communication strategy. How does it actually translate strategically? What does it mean for all the channels? And then how do all the channels build upon that? So really, this is the key thing you need to worry about. You need to make sure you understand the task for, um, for uh, communications. You need to make sure the consumer insight is something interesting. There's a nice kind of rich tension to it. You outline the consumer, the communication strategy, how you want to behave and act in all the media channels. And then you kind of crystallise that big idea or that innovation piece and then talk about how it amplifies through all the channels. Again, I know it sounds a lot more, more simple than when you actually do it. So, on the big idea, as you all know, it has to naturally flow off the insight. The big idea can't be something that you randomly come at. And it may be that when you read this brief, you come up with a big idea immediately. That's okay, write it down. Make sure you capture anything that comes to mind as you're reading the brief, but don't make it the starting point. Capture it, then go back and make sure that you've understood the task, that you've understood the insight and see if that idea is still sound. Um, make sure you name your paper, even if you need to be creative with it and you wanna do a logo, but we're reading you know, potentially 100 um, award entries for this. So the ones that will stand out are the ones that are, have got a great bold name that we can then remember, okay, that was the paper that talked about this. So make sure that you do those type of things. When it comes to the actual media strategy, the biggest fall down is when people start to do a laundry list of different ways into the idea. Make sure you're concise, pick the key channels, and then make sure the channels only build upon the idea, that they're not separate, they're not something else that you go, but by the way, this would be really cool if you did something else over here on mobile, just because I've got a great idea. Unfortunately, it's back to that cull the irrelevant piece. Cull that out and just make sure it's all consistent to that one idea. And then have fun amplifying. You've chosen the channels for a reason, you've understood the consumer, it's all linked to the task at hand. Now have a really good time amplifying through the channels because that's the thing where we get to be most creative as a media industry is actually how we then use the channels to bring that connection with, with people to life. 
And the last point here is to really make sure that you make it easy for the judges. So again, as I said, we're judging a lot of papers. Make sure that you look at the criteria and actually consider how we're actually going to be allocating marks, you know, 10% for understanding the task, etc. So if you haven't understood the task, if you haven't crystallised it somehow in your paper, then you're potentially losing 10 points. Um, and make it easy for us to understand that this is the insight. I know it sounds naff, but write insight on there so we can make sure we're, going, we're looking at the paper going, yeah, that, that's what they were talking about there. Um, so make sure you cover all the criteria. And as you all know, because you're here today, which is fantastic, but you have to be in it to win it. And at the end of the day, yes, we have one winner and we have five finalists or whatever it is, I don't know the exact number, but you should be getting a lot more out of this, particularly if this is your you know, something that you do as part of your own development to either get into strategy or to become a better implementation planner, whatever it is, it's really brilliant that you're actually taking the time to enter this type of competition. So that's really the tips and tricks we wanted to just set up today. Now the crux of what we actually want to talk about is Youth Off The Streets. It's um, a really inspiring uh, charity or community organisation. Now Christine isn't here, is she? Okay, that's fine. So we have Andy, as Carol mentioned, from Youth Off The Streets. And I have got the brief, you've all got it? Perfect. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the brief effectively and any questions that you have, if I can't answer them then we will. We will throw to Andy and hopefully Christine, who is um, the one running the charity at their angle. So everyone's got a copy? Excellent. And I'm not going to read this line for line, despite the fact you kind of look like I'm at a school right now and I'm teaching a <laughs> class. I promise I'm not going to read to you. But why we've chosen Youth Off the Streets is actually, as Carol mentioned, um, it's a really worthy organisation that we, we honestly want to be part of and any of the creative and collective genius that we've got in the room, it, we could use any of your ideas to help this. This would be a very worthwhile cause. So whilst I'm not going to go into the details up the top, I do want to say what kind of upset me a lot when I started working with the guys and, and talking to them about the brief was the sheer number of people that are actually homeless under a certain age here, the youth that don't have a home to go to. And so more than 47,000 people under 25 are homeless in Australia. And of this number, half of them will be turned away from, from anywhere, protection and youth hostels. So that really concerns us that there are all these kids that none of us have even realised are out on the street. So it becomes a really big issue. Um, females are more likely to have access to homeless services on their own, whereas men don't as much and also they can't go in as couples, it makes it more difficult. Um, and there are all these reasons behind it. So there's obviously domestic and, and family violence and everything. So I won't, like I said, go into massive amounts of detail on the first page because that'll be for you to read, for you to research and ask any questions at the end. But we do want to impress upon you how worthy a cause this is and why we're getting behind it. So if you do go to the next page, um, it's not all doom and gloom for the, for the organisation. What they're trying to do is actually a really worthwhile cause of creating a sleep out initiative. So the plan is, and this is where you really get involved, is we're going to invite schools to high schools to take part in this. They're going to hold their own overnight sleep out initiatives. And so what that will mean will be getting kids to actually experience what it would be like to not have um, access to home, not have access to uh, hot, hot, hot food, etc. So what we want to do is make them take a taste of what it must be like to not have a home uh, above their head. Now the plan is that we actually talk to teachers, students and the peer groups and then what the high schools do is actually create their own desire to do a sleep out event and then it's peer to peer donation and they fundraise for it and then they hold the actual event. And there are a whole lot of marketing and um, communication touch points that the guys have listed out there and how it will happen. Again, I'll let you read that at your own time because it's all pretty clear. What I actually want to talk about is on the next page, which is the role for communications. So I want to make sure that we're all crystal on what you're being asked to do with this brief. So the role for communication is to drive awareness of youth off the streets and specifically the sleep out initiative. So that's the part of it that we really need to make sure we hit awareness. We also secondly want to encourage participation and sleep up uh, and sign up for the sleep out event. Obviously those two things are intrinsically linked but just to make sure you understand we're raising big awareness for it and then part of that will be making sure people actually participate in it. 
Now, who are we talking to? We've actually tried to make sure this is a simple brief so you can spend more time articulating your thoughts rather than circling back to find the audience. So what we've talked to is high school students living in New South Wales specifically. That will be Sydney and regional New South Wales, so just think of New South Wales the entire. And then secondary are parents and teachers of high school students in New South Wales. So we have a very clearly defined audience. We want to get to the students in these high schools in New South Wales but equally, as a secondary audience, it's going to be important that we're reaching mum, dad and their teachers because they're the ones that are going to support them doing this initiative. And then what do they currently think? And it'll be interesting to see how much you find out when you're doing your own research piece into this. But to be honest, many people won't have even thought about the issue beyond being aware that some people are homeless. So they're just not fully aware of the reasons behind why some people are homeless as well. And after talking with Andy and the team, I know it, but it kind of reminds you again of what unfortunate domestic violence and certain situations that poor families are going through. So reasons they're actually, you know, not living in home can be bigger than just that they ran away for the sake of it. So what do we want them to think? We want them to know that the, place, the streets are no place for any young person and we want them to understand the hardship that someone goes through. We'll talk now because for me the consumer insight piece that we were look, looking at was most important when we were bringing this to life for you and again it's how you build upon this. But most Australian teenagers find it hard to imagine what it would actually be like. I think it's really easy to see it played out on popular TV soaps and you see the homeless child and it's always over glamorised. So this audience just don't have a true understanding of what it would really be like to not have access to a bathroom and not know when your next meal was coming and to be scared the whole time that you're potentially going to be hurt. So no one's really depicting the sheer hardships of living on the street. And this audience find it em hard to empathise because again, they go home to a bedroom that's full of you know, Xbox and laptops and mobile phones and, and they just can't comprehend what it must be like. That said, what I want us to be careful of is not presuming this audience don't care. And I think that, that you know, it's really easy to pretend they're selfish because they do have everything. It's not at all. These guys definitely want to help out. They're just not conscious of the issues at hand. And that's the job we have to do is raise awareness and then drive participation. Um, so we want them to understand the broader context as well as why people are living on the streets, what's behind that reasoning too. So your task, very specifically, is to drive 1,000 high school students in New South Wales to sign up to the Sleep Out event in 2014. It's going to happen in October 2014. Don't get too hung up on the year. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter massively. We're doing a pilot season this year and that's the reason why we're talking about next year because we wanted to make sure this was broad enough for you. So for the, the 2014 October um, Sleep Out, we'll be running that and we need 1,000 participants to sign up in New South Wales. Now how we're going to measure that is that Brand awareness is not currently measured, so a proxy, it can be assumed that healthy growth in awareness um, and understanding these markets will lead to increased high school students participating. So when you're coming up with your response, don't get too hung up again on what level of awareness you're driving. Just know that whatever you're doing has to drive awareness linked to participation and the measurable objective at the end will be a thousand people signing up. Now in terms of, um, you know, the third part there, of course, of course, we'd love to see increase in Facebook because that's where we can actually connect with this audience more and at the moment we only have 2,900 people that are actually part of that. So that would all be part of it, but um, like I said, the key objective is going to be those 1,000 people that actually sign up to take part in this. Now the sleep outs can be held any um, day during the month of October and that should help you then figure out when you're actually going to be communicating. And like I said, the key ge geographic consideration is New South Wales. You have a million dollars to play with to do this um, and you should also be considering non-monetary partnerships. So any type of partnership where you could see a relationship would benefit from both parties, make sure you consider that um, when you're coming into it. And then like I said in the first part of it, there are loads of assets that Youth Off The Street has, including their Facebook page and their Twitter feed. Make sure you're looking at those, you're understanding what role they play and how you could leverage them as part of your response. So that, my friends, as well as the back page which tells you how we're going to be judging you, is pretty much the summation of the brief. Um, now I know it's a lot to take in, but do you have any questions? And I, again, I know this forum's never the best for asking these, but yes, John. Uh, he's, he's still working 100% at Youth Off The Street, so in terms of availability, it depends what it is. 
Um, he always, you know, he gets along so well with the kids, so he tries to work with them. He's also a teacher still, so he teaches them. Um, assume that he'll be available for any big events or launches or, you know, things like that. He'll, he'll be available where he can, he's, you know, he does it all for the kids, so, yeah, make that assumption. Uh, I think there's a few, again I'll have to speak to Christine, she's the marketing manager, but I know there's, they've got a lot of video footage at the moment and they're talking about just over the coming weeks editing all that into um, some useful tools. I, I'm, I'm not too sure whether there's some video of some kids talking. I know there's a few, I just don't know if it's current, but I know they're developing them at the moment, so perhaps assume for now that there will be um, some, um, at least a few kids talking in front of the camera about their experiences and how far they've come. Yeah, so there are some testimonials that you can draw upon um, on their website, but again, if you wanted to create video assets and everything, you, you know, absolutely would be well within your right to do that. Production. Yeah, 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 production needs to come out of that million. We do, usually for specific programs, I think most of the government support is for the residential services. So a lot of the, um, the homeless kids, you know, they go through the full continu continuum of care, but um, the ones who are really in, in the need of most help in terms of residential. Um, and we've got facilities all across New South Wales, so that's where most of the government funding is. Uh, I can't remember the exact percentage. I've only been with youth off the streets for eight weeks. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know all the stats. But um, uh, I, I think it may be off the top of my head, 40, 45%, but we can confirm with Chris when she comes in. Does it all make sense, what you've been asked to do? We tried to really make these briefs as simple as possible and exciting. Hopefully you're inspired by it. It really is an awesome, awesome group to get to work with and a good chance to see if we can make a difference as an industry for these guys too. So um, any questions that you have at the end that you might not have felt comfortable asking in the open forum, make sure you come and grab us. Otherwise, um, well done on actually taking the step to answer these briefs. It will help your career, I know. And yeah, good luck. Just, just one comment. I'm a little tired today because I actually went out last night on um, a program we have called Sleepwalk. Um, we've got a fellow Gary who goes out every night and helps the kids and takes food, food to them and blankets and refers them on to refuges and I was out late last night but if you do want to get some further insight he takes one volunteer out uh, five nights a week so you can get in contact with us if you want to get even more insight and actually go out there and he can talk you through you know some real examples some kids out there and you can meet some and chat to them that's all <laughs>